It's been a very long time since I've done a game jam. Like nine months ago was the last time I did one. But this is the perfect time to do one, sitting here stuck in quarantine. I looked around a bit on itch.io and quickly stumbled across the Content Creators Community Jam, or the CCC Jam. I'm excited to start working on a new jam game and already have some ideas floating around. I really want to make a top-down game with an endless randomly generated world. Now I'm not talking Minecraft quality procedural worlds. That would require actual skill. No, I'm making Epic Gamer put dots in random places and then put buildings where the dots are generation. Yes, that's official name, don't look it up. Okay, so it is now 11 o'clock at night on Friday, and the jam theme has just been announced. Playing both sides. Hmm, not sure how I'll fit my idea into that, but I can think about that in the morning. Normally in these sorts of videos, there's a whole bit about trying to figure out just what I should do, but I kinda already knew what I was gonna do, just not how I was going to fit the theme in. I started jotting down some ideas and plans for the game. The basic idea for the game was a zombie survival game with an endless, randomly generated world. So what in the absolute fuck does that mean? Well, the idea is that the game is a top-down zombie survival game, in which you run from buildings to buildings, looting supplies and weapons. There are constantly zombies spawning around your general area, and so you have to keep moving in order to keep from being swarmed. But when you die, you lose all your stuff and levels and have to start over again. But a zombie version of yourself of all your stats will then be spawned in your next world, and if you kill them, you get some of your stuff back. It's a bit of a gigantic reach to say that I'll get this done in a week, but I want to try. So now it's time to open up Unity and create a basic top-down movement and combat system. Before anything else, I just made some very simple characters. Meet Ginger Boy and his undead twin brother, Zombie Boy. While they currently just look like some inner the gungeon rejects, they're fine for now. Spoiler alert, I never changed what they look like. I then put together a basic top-down shooter controller using the sprite that I created earlier. And I tried for way too long to get the movement to be less floaty, and it eventually decided they was fine. I took a break to go run and have lunch, and then I got back to work on the game. I added a bit to the script that makes the player face the mouse, either to the left or to the right. For whatever reason, there's a slight movement of the hand whenever the player is moving, but that actually looks pretty cool, so I'll keep it. The movement system is basically done, so now it's time to get into the combat system. First off, shooting. I stuck a script aptly named Gun Script onto the pistol object. This script should hopefully be versatile enough for me to create all the guns that are needed in the game just off of it. I added a bunch of generic values that we set from the editor for the gun, stuff like max ammo, the number of bullets, reload time, and so on. After a bit of work and a lot of looking things up, I now have shooting working. Next up, the reloading. Reloading is fairly simple. I just have to make it that whenever you hit R, it starts a countdown. And then whenever it hits zero, your gun is reloaded. I then started to make those values I made earlier actually work. The spread just adds a random value to the rotation of the bullet before giving it a force. The bullet amount repeats the shooting code for however many bullets you need. I am now going to make some basic sprites for the different guns. The ones I'm making now are the pistol, the shotgun, the AR, and the Uzi. I think that's enough to land me an M rating and on an FBI watch list. Benjamin Gandhi once said, The more senseless violence in a video game, the more fun it is. I then made the different guns into prefabs, and now I can switch out the guns easily. Now that I can switch out the guns, it created an issue with the shooting script, because programming. But I quickly fixed that and moved on. So I'm going to make it so you can pick up and drop weapons. I still have PTSD from the last time I did it, but I still remember how. I just make it so that the gun creates a pickup object in a spot with the same sprite and then destroys itself. Finally, for today, I watched some videos on world generation. The one I'll probably use will be Blackthorn Broads. It's fairly simple and I can modify it to work with my game. So I've been working on this for nearly an hour, but for no reason at all, the on trigger enter script will not work. And I cannot get the pickups to work. After all the time I spent messing with it, I realized that the reason it wasn't working was the issue with the debug logging, not the actual collision. So now at 10pm at night, after several hours of work, I finally finished something I was planning to finish yesterday. I then quickly put together a Trello board to replace this notebook I was working out of, because paper is stupid.
I have two major things to get done today. First off, I have to implement a star pathfinding for the zombie enemies, and second, I need to get the basics of the random world generation. These are two things I was most worried I would not finish in time, so getting them out of the way early will be a huge help. Normally, for something like pathfinding, I would probably build a system from scratch, but because I only have one week to make this game, using a pre-made system would be much better. So I downloaded the Unity A Star Pathfinding project from this website, link in description. It's supposed to be a highly optimized, powerful pathfinding system. And here it is. It was really easy to get working, and is actually working fantastically for my game. Though while I was recording this footage, I realized that you can pick up more than one gun, so I need to fix that. So I then fixed that. Okay, so now I'm getting into the whole level generation part. So first off, I decided exactly how I'm going to do this. The way that the worlds will be generated is through chunks. The chunks are 20 by 20. Each chunk is given one randomly generated chunk template. There will probably be around 20 templates. Spoiler alert, there are three in the final game. The templates are just a set of points, but each point has a chance of spawning one of many different objects. There are smaller points that spawn things like trees or bushes, and there are larger ones that spawn things like houses. The two levels of randomness should make the game feel almost fully randomly generated. Though that is impossible if not like lava lamps or something. So I've already got the system down for the individual chunks. It's very simple and basically copied from the Black Thorn Prod tutorial. The more difficult part of this will be loading chunks automatically, but right now I'm making sure this generation part works well. Right now Pathfinding only works in the chunk you're in, which is a pretty good way of doing it, I think. It makes it so that zombies halfway across the world won't make your computer slow down. You can see the train generator in action here. Each time I start the game, a different level generates. The pathfinding system also updates after the level generates, so zombie pathfinding should work as well with the random generation. The last thing I did today was just make a lot of new assets for buildings and stuff. This morning, the first thing I did was make a few houses using the already created assets. Then I imported the new assets and made basically all the structures for the entire game. There's three houses, a store, and a church. I also made a new gravestone asset that can be spawned. I just made two more chunk templates. I just made two more chunk templates, and now we have a few chunks to use. It's time to automatically generate them. So first off, I made a script that I can use to set the random number generator seed. If the seed is, say, gamer, then you'll always get the same world whenever you generate it. If the seed is something else, say, lit, then you get this fancy house with a gravestone in the middle of it. Working on the chunk loading is a bit more difficult. I made a new object for this, and whenever the game starts, it simply creates 9 chunks out of random templates. I continued to work on this throughout the day, but I didn't really make any progress. So I do really need to get chunk generation working, but I can't figure out how to do that, so I'm going to put that out of the way and get some other essential systems out of the way as quickly as I can. First off, loot spawning in houses. I need to make houses spawn things like HP and ammo pickups, so I created a little loot spawner object, made some HP and ammo pickups that don't do anything yet, and made a basic script that decides what to spawn in the spot, and there we go. Now I have a system that randomly spawns guns and other objects and buildings. I tried to keep the stuff spawning in the same general locations, while also keeping it random enough. Unfortunately, I will not be able to make the looting system super fun, it'll be pretty basic. Anyway, now I need to make the guns actually properly work. Right now the bullets don't only look awful, but go through walls, so time to fix that. I gave that a trail renderer and actual sprite. And today is what I'd like to call a crunch day, because I need to get a lot done today. To be precise, four things need to be finished today. I need to make zombies and players damage each other. Then I need to make chunks properly load. Then I need to get zombies to spawn. And finally, I need to implement XP and leveling up. So let's get started on making players and zombies damage each other. I made the zombie into a prefab, and then updated a few things to make the pathfinding strip work with being a prefab. Then I made the zombie destroy the bullets when touching them and subtract from their health value. When that value equals zero, the zombie disappears. I then gave the player HP value and made it take damage when it hits the zombie. I also applied a force on it that works like a knockback. Finally, when the player's HP hits zero, the scene restarts. I'll hopefully get a better thing later, but this works for now. 
Now I'm going to implement chunk loading, for real this time. I made it so that whenever you enter a chunk, the chunk checks all adjacent chunks. And if any of those are missing, then it creates level templates in the spots where they should be. I might even be able to make it so chunks despawn to save memory whenever you aren't on them. Anyway, I just started off by researching methods of checking if an object exists in a certain location. I figured out the two good methods of doing this are physics.checkspear and using raycasting. So I made a new script and attached it to the chunk templates. Then I made this blob of code. If you want to know what each bit does, then you can read the comments. But this is easily the most proud I've ever been for a bit of code. The funny thing is that this absolute unit of code is only for one direction, so I've still got some copying and pasting to do before it's done. So I finished the code and it now works. Endless generation. There's a bit of a lag spike whenever you generate a new chunk. But after exporting it as a standalone EXE, I realized that the lag spikes aren't really a very big issue whenever it's a standalone. But I realized that the method I'm using to check if I entered a chunk sometimes doesn't work if you're going straight up or down. So I increase the distance at which chunks are created. This leads to more chunk generation and makes it so that it works 100% of the time. The final part of it is simply moving the pathfinding grid with you. I found the script procedural gen mover and assigned my player to it and it works perfectly. You know how I called yesterday crunch day? Well today is going to be more of the same. I still have a lot of tasks to do today, some big and some small, and I need to have a finished game by the end of today, so I need to get going quick. First off, UI. The game needs UI. So I created a mock-up UI that doesn't actually function yet, but is in a pretty close area to where I want it to be in the final game. One feature that I had to cut was leveling up. I was planning on doing the whole stat, XP, and level thing, but this is the last day and I don't have nearly enough time to get that in. Anyway, then I made the ammo counter. It's pretty basic UI stuff that I don't like doing, but I know how to do. I also made it display the name of the gun you're holding. But the big thing I had to do was rework the way ammo worked. Right now you have an endless supply of ammo inside your gun, you just need to reload. Well, I reworked that, so now you don't have an endless supply. And if you drop your gun, then the pickup stores the amount of ammo, so you can't use that to get more ammo or to quickly reload. I also made it so that if you try to pick up two gun pickups at the same time, then it destroys a random gun, so no cheating. The BUI is basically done. I just modified the layout a bit to clean it up. Now the only things left are a bit of gameplay polish and a couple new features in the menu and death screen. Let's get on with it. I'm gonna make the pickups, ammo, and health actually work. So for a zombie game, there is only one zombie and he's really easy to kill. So let's get some more zombies in. I made a zombie spawner script and made it so the zombies can be spawned in at random around the player. The original plan was for them to not be able to spawn within the camera's view, but it did not spawn the zombies correctly and I really just needed to move on. Okay, for the whole player turning into a zombie thing, it's time to do that. I just made a new sprite for the zombie version of the player. Then I made a variant of the prefab for the zombie and changed up a few stats. The player zombie is faster and has more HP than a normal zombie. Unfortunately, there is no reward for killing him. Originally, I was planning on giving you your old items back, but there just isn't time to get that complicated system in place. The gameplay is finally done, and it's time to make a menu screen and a death screen. Should be simple enough. Um, so Unity just crashed. I just restarted my computer and it is now 10 p.m. I've got one hour left, oh boy. So I made a basic menu screen, there's a little animation and a big name and some buttons. The about page is just a thing that gives a bit more lore, plugs my YouTube. This is, it was all made for the CCC jam in one week and I patched it all together and the game works pretty smoothly. I was expecting this all to take a few minutes longer so I decided to make some quick sounds and add them in. We got some great music made by Kafer for the jam. Link to the music in the description. It was really nice of him to make it available for this jam. Then I came back and made sure Infinite was spelled right in the title. Uh, by now I just had 20 minutes left and still need to get the sound in. There isn't much footage here because I was speeding through everything so fast, but then it was done. I submitted the game 6 minutes before the deadline. So I finished the game, but there are actually quite a few important things cut from it. Leveling up, more weapons, an actual goal a stat screen, and I do wish that I'd been a bit more productive some days. I also wish I hadn't left the testing guns in the final build of the game. But overall, I think it was a success. I made a system for generating a world that isn't impossibly taxing on the system. I think if I spaced out the chunk generation into more frames, it would have ran about 50 times better. So yeah, I made a new game, which you can check out on itch.io. I learned about procedural generation and pathfinding and unity, and I had something to do this week. Overall, I count that a win. 
If you enjoyed this video, please liquidate your entire company and donate the money to me. Or if you can't do that because you're ashamed that you wouldn't have enough money to drown me in, if you like or subscribe, I suppose that would be acceptable. Um, bye.